Look, the only thing I'm going to be reviewing today is caffeine is good for your health. Uh, my opponent's secondary claims are improves isometric maximum force. It's the second secondary claim is a pain reducer. And the third is works as an antioxidant, reduces risk of diseases. Uh, right front, for the sec first secondary claim is my opponent says that caffeine improves isometrical maximum force, which means that your muscles will be able to move longer. But in an article from bodytechnician.com, it says that caffeine makes all your muscles tighter, which in turn makes you have more tension in your muscles. And I don't think that's the best feeling in the world to have your muscles in tension. And according to, and this causes the caffeine, like from coffee or soda they drink, and according to open tokensports.com, the recommended dose of caffeine is 500 milligrams per day. And as we all know, many people drink coffee or soda, most, most likely coffee in the mornings. And according to wholevegan.com, so people drink as much as seven to eight cups of coffee a day. And that's m way more than 500 milligrams per day. And that could cause more tension in your muscles, causing you to have less movement. The secondary, second secondary claim, my opponent says that caffeine reduces pain like headaches. And in an article in the World Headache Crisis, they talked about an experiment in which they had 36 boys and girls who drank soda and had headaches regularly. And then the experiment was for those kids to stop drinking soda for a point in time. And 33 out of 36 of those kids said their headaches were gone. And so with caffeine, they had headaches, and without, they had no headaches. In response to the third, second theory claim, my opponents said that caffeine works as an antioxidant and reduces risk of diseases. An article from AirDaysHealth.com says, but these studies still need to be backed up by more research, and it's important to remember that drinking too much coffee can cause side effects. So it's not enough information to say that it reduces uh, risk for disease. Like if people start drinking liquids of caffeine, they can cause other bad symptoms like a racing heartbeat or high blood pressure, and those can easily cause any other kind of disease like heart disease or something like that. All in all, having tighter muscles, which makes tension, or having causing caffeine causing headaches or Having a racing heartbeat is not safe to say that caffeine is good for your health. Thank you. All right, the structural stuff is fine. I thought you summarized the claim on the first point pretty well. Uh, you've got a counterclaim that talks about this and uh, basically suggests that it's really a tension builder. All right, well, there's not any analysis of the advocates' claims on this point and whether or not that provides us with some particular advantage. You basically have the counterclaim that's going on here, which I think is good, uh, but I think your inference needs to be a little bit stronger about what the negative consequences are. I thought that that was uh, not as strong as it needed to be. And then you get into a discussion about the number of milligrams that are consumed a day and uh, how much is required in order to get uh, this particular benefit. I think there's a good press to be made here as to what the appropriate amount is according to the advocate. You know, what, how many milligrams a day are we supposed to be consuming? Well, the truth of the matter is we're consuming more than that, and that's producing a negative effect. Or if we're not consuming that much, what, can you show us the consequences of this? Is there any way to measure those particular consequences? And then you kind of create a little bit of a dilemma for them in that argument. And I think that that might work uh, as a better way of making that particular position. The headache argument I thought was kind of interesting because you have a very direct response 
response here based on a single study that seems to produce contradictory conclusions to what the advocates are presenting. And I thought that was good. There's not really any discussion of the advocates' evidence on this particular point. I think if you did a little bit more general background research on this, you'd also discover that one of the things that people talk about is that when people become addicted to caffeine, getting off of the caffeine causes them to have headaches also. And so in essence, you've got a double whammy here. There's a contradictory conclusion from this one study, and then I think you've missed the opportunity to maybe you know, slam them with something else on this other point. Uh, the discussion of antioxidants is diminished a little bit by the, the preliminary state, statement about the research. That's okay. You're kind of reducing any particular claim there. Um, and, then, and then you kind of, again, go back to the danger argument here, and it's not really quantified. So we're contrasting kind of a vague um, potential benefit of the antioxidant effect to a vague potential negative consequence here, and it, it just is not uh, as certain and strong as you would want it to be. I, I know that part of the problem is that you know, it's very ambivalent on this issue. I know it's tough to find this information. But the presentation was a little bit dry, and your material is really kind of short, so uh, there's more to be said on these issues. Um, but uh, it was well organized and you had a couple of good points there. All right, thank you.